Earlier this year, Google released two technical writing courses for engineers. And since then, I have been getting a lot of questions about the courses and if I would recommend the courses to new tech writers. And my answer to that question is yes, but you need to be aware of certain things to make the most of the courses. So in this video, I want to give you an overview of the courses and share my favorite parts of the courses. And I want to make you aware of the things to look out for and give you some additional material to complement the course. And I want to share how I would have used the course if I was a new tech writer. So this is what the course website looks like. And as you can see, they have very clearly identified their audience. These are technical writing courses for engineers. To give you some more context about these courses, these are the courses that Google developed for its internal engineers in 2015. And since then, the internal engineers at Google have been using these courses to improve their writing skills. And in 2020, Google opened up the courses to the rest of the world to help engineers all over the world write better. But so these courses are specifically meant for people who develop the technology that they write about. So this is a writing course for engineers, not as much of a tech writing course for beginners. And Google does a very good job of calling this out at every step. They have this section about are these courses for me and they specifically point out that these are courses for professional software engineers or computer science students or people who are in highly technical roles like product managers. And that is my biggest call out for New tech writers who use this course to learn tech writing is that this is an excellent resource to learn the writing side of it, but not as much as the tech side of it. Because these courses assume that you already are very confident and very familiar with the technological part that you're writing about. Like they are assuming that you are the person who developed that technology. So you already know how that technology works and what information needs to be conveyed to the reader. And they're just helping you bridge that communication gap between you, the creator of the technology, and the person who is going to use that technology. But if you are a tech writer and you are not the person who developed the technology, then you need to take care of the first part yourself. You need to spend time learning that technology so that you can write about it. This course will not help you become a tech writer. This course will help you become a better writer once you know the technology you're writing for. In my day-to-day -day life as a tech writer, I spent almost 60 to 70% of my time just learning the technology that I'm writing for. I spent a lot of time self-studying and reading up and talking to people and researching. And once I'm sure that I understand the technology, then this course would be helpful to me to bridge that gap and to communicate the information that I learned to the readers. Let's get into the actual course content. There are two courses that they released. There's Technical Writing 1 and Technical Writing 2. Let's look at the Technical Writing 1 objectives. And I think this is a very solid list of objectives for tech writers or engineers who want to learn how to write. And they cover all the basics of technical writing. And they have very concrete takeaways from the course content for example develop at least four strategies to shorten sentences or focus each paragraph on a single topic this is something we talked about in the last video about technical writing for non-native english speakers so i think this is a really solid list of objectives for people who want to work on their technical writing skills and the way this course is structured both both the courses are structured actually they have pre-class and in-class components. So you're currently viewing the start of the pre-class component. So I think their expectation is that you go through all these uh, sections all by yourself. And then at some point they will organize in-class component, like they will have a facilitator who will guide you through more exercises. And then you get to work with a partner so that you can do peer reviews and review each other's work. Um, I haven't taken the class yet because I haven't because they haven't organized a class since I came to know about this course uh, at least in a time frame that worked for me but I did take a look at the facilitators guide and I think the pre-class content is still helpful for non-engineering writers but the in-class component the one with the facilitators and like a classroom setting is definitely more geared towards engineering students because or engineers uh, because all their examples and the way they 
present that information is very relatable to engineers, but I think it will be counterproductive for non-engineering writers. That's just my gut instinct. I haven't taken the class. So if I get an opportunity to take the class, I will take it and then give you my actual informed opinion. Having said that, I think the pre-class content by itself is very, very helpful. So if you just go through this in-class content, you will learn a lot from it. At least I did. So let's get into the first technical writing course. So the first one teaches you the fundamentals of technical writing. The second one is about more advanced knowledge, I guess, which I think to be honest, I think this is pretty important knowledge even for beginners. Like I would consider the topics in the second course to also be fundamentals, but I see where they're coming from. I think they're kind of making it less intimidating uh, to get started with it. So going back to the first course, um, the first section in this course is just enough grammar. And even though the market is optional, I highly recommend you go through it because, you know, the, a refresher is always nice. And my favorite part is that they just don't dump the information on you, but they have also incorporated these exercises because I'm a very big believer in learning by doing. So I love when there are exercises and practice sections and projects incorporated in my online learning content. Um, so I really, really like that they did that. So this first section is all about uh, a refresher on grammar. And then they build it up on like words and then sentences and paragraphs and documents, like the whole end-to-end -end experience of writing a doc, like all the important components. The next section is about words. And it's about using terms and acronyms and pronouns effectively. Then they have a refresher on active voice versus passive voice and why the active voice is better than the passive voice in most cases. Um, and then how to actually achieve that, how to convert passive sentences to active sentences. Again, with exercises, which I really, really like. And the next section is about clear sentences. And this is an important one because it focuses on verbs and adverbs and adjectives. Like if you choose a strong verb for your sentence, it elevates the sentence a lot and it makes it a lot clearer. And if you choose a strong verb, then you don't need adverbs or adjectives. And that makes your sentence shorter and it also makes it clearer. So I like that they focus on that and again, love the exercises. Then they have a section on short sentences and how to write them. This is an art skill. Let me tell you that. Writing short sentences that are very clear and concise and convey just the right amount of information is an art. It's a skill that's worth developing. That's where my personal effort is concentrated right now. That's a skill that I want to be better at personally. Um, so I really, really enjoyed this section. And then they have a section on lists and tables, when to use bullet lists, when to use numbered lists, and how to make lists parallel, how to punctuate things, when to use tables, when to use lists, all good things. Then we move on to paragraphs. Uh, focus each paragraph on a single topic. I really, really like this section. Answer the what, why, and how. This is really good. I really like this content. And my favorite part, of the tech writing process. If you have been following this channel for a while, you know I keep talking about audience analysis and the importance of writing for your audience. This is a very good section for moving from the writer mindset to an audience focused mindset. Here again, they talk about the audience and then how to structure your document. Again, we have another optional unit, which is punctuation, but I highly recommend that you go through it, even if they marked it as optional, because I think it's really, really good. They have a section on markdown, which is a lightweight markup language that is getting very, very popular. So another frequently asked question is what technical writing tool I should start with. And my go-to recommendation is GitHub and markdown. So I love that they have included a section on markdown. And now they also link to my favorite resource for learning markdown which is the markdown tutorial so if you want to learn a technical writing tool i highly recommend that you start with the markdown tutorial it's a really good resource and that's the end of the first 
course and then in the second course they get into more advanced topics which is self-editing again i don't know how self-editing is an advanced topic but i think what they're talking about is like the first course is more about getting the basics right like words and sentences and paragraphs and then in the second course they get to the technical writing part of things which is style guides and illustrations and coding samples and stuff uh, so they talk about self-editing and style guides and again they link to one of my favorite resources of all time which is google's style guide another of my favorites is the microsoft style guide which i saw linked somewhere else in the course uh, but i highly recommend checking out both the google style guide and the uh, microsoft style guide and again we talk about audience we talk about reading it loud later we talk about finding a peer editor i have talked about all these topics in many of my videos so you know that i completely agree with this content um then the next topic is organizing large documents when to write write them how to outline them how to introduce them how to structure the navigation how to add headings and disclosing information progressively again very very good techniques to have and the next topic is illustrations this one i'm a bit iffy about because i haven't personally used a lot of illustrations in the documents i have written so far in my career but again i work in a niche documentation genre so it might be useful stuff for someone who maybe writes user documentation like more ux based documentation and the next topic is about creating sample code. Um, this is definitely more geared towards engineers or API documentation, I would suppose. And that's the end of the second course. The second course is pretty concise and uh, very condensed, uh, but I still think it packs a lot of good information. So now that we have discussed the actual content of the courses, I want to point out a few things. And we have already talked about the first point, which is remember that these courses are intended for engineers so if you're a non-engineering tech writer make sure that you spend as much time as you need to learn the technology you want to write for and then come to this course to work on your writing skills the second thing i want to point out is that um, there are certain things that are missing from this course but i think we also have other material available that would help complement this course and then fill in the gaps uh, that this course has. For example, when you talk about documents, uh, they talk about how to structure the document and how to add headings and stuff. And also in the second course, I think I have another section on organizing large documents where they briefly touch on the types of documents. I think this is a gap in this course is that they talk about writing in general, but they don't differentiate how to write different types of documents. So what I mean by different types of documents is that you have four primary types of technical documents. You have the how-to guides, you have tutorials, you have reference docs, and you have conceptual docs. And each of those documents have different purposes and different techniques to write good documents. And I think that's missing from this. Course. To complement this part and to make up for the missing information, I highly recommend you check out this framework. It's Divio's documentation framework. It is very, very, very good. I cannot recommend this highly enough. I do want to make a video just about this framework at some point. Uh, but for now, I just want to point you to this resource and highly recommend it. You should definitely go check it out. They do a really good job of explaining what are tutorials and what are how-to guides and what are reference guides and what are conceptual or concept guides and then how to write each of these things like how to write a tutorial how to write a how-to guide and so on um, so this is an excellent resource that i highly recommend you check out the third thing i want to point out is the tools so i mentioned this is passing that they have a section on markdown which is a lightweight markup language um, but they don't have a section on GitHub. So my go-to recommendations for technical writing tools is Markdown and GitHub. They intentionally did not 
include a section on GitHub, I think, because this course is for engineers and engineers will already know GitHub. But if you're a non-engineer and you come across this section, remember that you should probably also learn GitHub along with Markdown. And the fourth thing I want to point out is the doc resources. So I, again, mentioned this in passing, but Google has this excellent style guide. I love this document so much. It's my go-to resource for all things style guide. And um, I think this complements the course really well. So the course content is like a good primer or like technical writing level zero. Um, and then once you get more familiar and start building your skills, you can then graduate to the style guide. The thing to remember about the style guide is that it's very info heavy and it can get intimidating really, really fast because it's a lot of content and you don't need to remember all that content. The only thing you need to do is make familiarize yourself with the style guide so that when you're writing and you have a question, you know where to come and look for the answer. So just like go through it and make yourself familiar with it. Uh, but it can get very, very intimidating really fast. So what Google did is that they have this section called the highlights of the style guide. So if I were a new tech writer, how I would approach this is that I would first go through all the content in the technical writing course. Then once I feel confident that I've learned the information from the courses, then I would come to the highlight section of the style guide, use it when I'm writing my docs, practice it, and then gradually make my way through the rest of the content um, as I keep practicing my tech writing skills. So yeah, that's the thing that I wanted to point out is that give yourself time if you're going to use that course, do it in steps. All of that information is very intimidating and overwhelming if you're a new writer. Um, so structure it so that you have levels, like start with the technical writing course, then move on to the highlights of the style guide, and then go to the actual main content of the style guide. And the last thing I want to leave you with is how I would use all this content if I were a new tech writer. So I'm a person who learns by doing stuff. If I just read all this information, I might not retain it well and it will not be as useful to me. So what I would do is I would create a project for myself. For example, um, let's say I want to write a beginner's guide to streaming on Twitch. Uh, that would be my tech writing project. Like how do you get started for as a beginner? And then I would go through the process myself. I would self-study. I would spend all the time that I need to learn all the options available and then figure out like actually learn how to stream on Twitch. And then once I know how that thing works, then I would write my first draft just for myself, nobody else. And then I would come to this course and then I would have my first draft and then I would use the content in this course to improve the first draft. That would be my second draft. Then I would go to the highlight section and work through the highlight section and use that information to work on my second draft. And by the end of it, I would have my third draft. And then I would go through all, not all, but like some of the content in the actual style guide and then improve the third draft to come up with my final draft. And then I would have somebody review the final draft. And then that would be my portfolio sample for my technical writing job applications, I guess. So. That's my recommendation uh, for new tech writers on how to make the most of this content. Uh, but overall, I think this is a very solid resource and that you should totally make use of it. Just keep in mind the things that we discussed and you should be good to go. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel for more tech writing videos. And for even more tech writing tips and advice, subscribe to the newsletter linked in the description box below. Thanks for watching. Bye.